Hello, Bishop Farron here. I'm speaking to you from the closed door of Derry Lane Church, but from today, this door and many church doors will be open for public worship. And it will be great to be back together again. In the meantime, in the month of May, we will celebrate some of the great landmarks of the Christian faith online. Ascension, Pentecost and Trinity. And then we will pause these online services for a period of time and review them. We really need to get back to church. It's who we are and what we do as Christians. And it's so important for us to reconnect. So I look forward in time to meeting and greeting you in church, in person. Thank you. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is written on his hands, my name is hidden in his heart, I know that while in heaven he stands, no Park can force me to depart. No park can force me to depart. Good morning. Our service this morning comes from the Cavan, Belturbet, and Kilmore Cathedral groups of parishes. And we hope you enjoy our worship on this, the Sunday after Ascension Day. Our opening hymn is from the church hymnal. It's number 259, Christ Triumphant, Ever Reigning.
Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Aware that we are all sinners, let's confess those sins to God our Father and we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we're going to join together and we're going to say the psalm which is appointed for this morning. Psalm number one, which you'll find on page 594. We read it through together. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the sanctuary of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not be able to stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is written in the Acts of the Apostles in the first chapter beginning at the 15th verse. In those days Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 people. He said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to sing our hymn. It's from the church hymnal, hymn number 606, As the Deer Pants.
A reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, beginning at verse 6. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Shall we pray? Lord, as we turn to your written word, that we might see the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are waiting, waiting for COVID to end, waiting for a return to normality, waiting to welcome people back into our churches and build our church lives together again. In Acts chapter 1, which was read earlier in the service, we find the first Christians, the early church, in waiting mode. Luke, the author of Acts, his second volume, after the Gospel according to Luke, telescopes three important markers in his introduction to the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the first Christians. The first marker is the resurrection, when Jesus appeared to his followers over a period of 40 days. We read in verse 3, and he, Jesus, the risen one, appeared to his followers for 40 days after his resurrection. The second marker that Luke draws attention to is the ascension where Jesus left his disciples for the final time. Again, we read in this chapter in verse 9. And when he was speaking, he was gathered into the cloud and was lifted before their very eyes. And the final marker in this introduction to the Acts of the Apostles is Pentecost, the day in which the Spirit came, and which we read in chapter 2, 
And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in the one place. And there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind, which filled the place. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Fifty days of waiting between the resurrection and Pentecost. Almost seven weeks of waiting. In this opening chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, Luke highlights four things that happened in this period of waiting of 50 days, which resonate with us at this time as we await the end of COVID and the beginning of normality, when we open our churches from today. The first of these things is promise. In verse 2, as we've already noted, Jesus had promised to his disciples the gift of his Father, the promised gift of his Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 12, we read that Jesus, who had said that they were to wait in Jerusalem, the disciples just did that. They waited for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit which came at Pentecost. Promise. These first disciples had no idea what the Spirit would bring or who the Spirit was. But they were soon to be filled with the Holy Spirit and it was the Holy Spirit who propelled them and powered them into the world, the world beyond themselves. We have no idea what it's going to be like in these summer months or indeed in the rest of the year, how things are going to work for the church and work out in the church. But we have this promise, the promise gift of the Spirit. And each believer has the gift of the Spirit. Jesus' presence within our lives is mediated through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if we have the Spirit, then all things are possible. Promise. The second feature of this waiting period is patience. Now we know from the Gospel accounts that the early followers of Jesus were not a very patient bunch. They got irritated with one another. They were impatient. They were even frustrated with Jesus from time to time because they, they wanted things to happen immediately. Doesn't that sound familiar? We too can be very impatient. We want things done, not simply today, but yesterday. And yet, over these 50 days of waiting, the early followers of Jesus grew in patience and obedience. There were 120 of them, as we read in Acts chapter 1, and yet they stayed together. The disciples from Galilee, the family of Jesus, the extended family, Mary and her children, and others who had joined them from Jerusalem, they were all together. No one defected. No one broke off. No one broke out. They were incredibly patient. Our church is open today. And we know that things will not change overnight. We will have to be patient patient with one another. Oh yes, we may get irritated, we may get frustrated when we see that people haven't come back to, the, to church in the same numbers or young people are missing or children are missing. We've got to be patient. We've got to stay together. We've got to be obedient to the Lord's call for us to be together on Sunday and to see what he is going to do amongst us as the days, the weeks and the months unfold. Patient. The third of these things that Luke wants to draw our attention to is that of prayer. In verse 4, we see the, sorry, verse 14, we see that the disciples met for prayer. And they devoted themselves to prayer together. The early church made prayer a priority. It was essential for them. And it was the fuel 
that drove the early church in its witness for Jesus Christ. What is prayer? Eugene Peterson, who translated the Bible from its original languages into a modern version called The Message, and you may have used it, says this of prayer. Imagine you want to meet with someone who you've always wanted to be in their presence. And imagine that they invite you to a meal, just the two of you together, in a very fine restaurant. Everything is prepared. The ambiance is lovely. There's a deep sense of intimacy. And although there are other people in the restaurant, and although other things are happening, you're taken up by this person who you have met. There's listening. There's conversation. There's moments of silence. There's deep meaning between you and the one who has invited you as a guest into their presence. Oh, the waiter comes to your table and takes your order and brings dishes. He refills your glasses. And at the end of the meal, to show your appreciation, you leave a tip. For Peterson, that is what prayer is like. A time set apart for conversation with God. Being intimate with God, listening to him, what he's saying through his word, talking with him, having silences of deep meaning. Prayer is a desire to be with someone and to share intimacy with the divine, with God. And the early Christians were full of this desire. In public and in private prayer, they devoted themselves to prayer. What of us? When we open our churches from this Sunday on, most of our service will take the form of morning prayer. And it's an invitation, as it were, to meet with God in the appointed place, his restaurant, if you like, in our beautiful church buildings where others join us. But it's to be with him together in the one place and to draw from him inspiration and love and forgiveness and healing and salvation. Everything has been prepared. All that we need to do is come and receive and enjoy this fellowship with the God of all of creation, prayer. And the last thing that I look wants to direct our attention to is purpose. As these first Christians waited for those 50 days for Pentecost and the Spirit to come, they waited but they weren't idle. They got on with things. And one of the things that they did was that they appointed a successor to Judas as one of the twelve. Judas, you recall, in the Gospel accounts, had betrayed Jesus. And sadly, he had then taken his own life. And it's Peter, the leader of the twelve, who draws the attention of the early church to the necessity of replacing Judas in the apostolic lineup. And so, towards the end of chapter 1, we read of this selection of Matthias, who took Judas's place. But the key thing was this, that Peter said it was for their witness that they needed another apostle. Because he understood what apostleship meant. To be an apostle was to be sent, sent out in Jesus' name. These early Christians were very aware of their purpose. Jesus had said, you are my witnesses to all the things that you've seen and heard from me. You have to take them and share them. There is much for us to do in the reopening of our churches to make them safe and hygienic, to ensure that we have social distancing and that in time that as all of those things recede as COVID recedes itself. We get back to what we would call normality, as it were. But why are we here? What are we for? What is our purpose? Our purpose is to witness to God in the world. And it begins here, 
Here in this place of Kilmore Cathedral, here in the parishes and the church buildings, up and down and across our diocese. Purpose. As we close our thoughts on Acts chapter 1 this morning, we have to acknowledge that COVID has shaken our world to the core. It has been a wake-up call for so many people in the world. And we are here, here in our church buildings and as we spill out of our church buildings and engage with people throughout the week, we are here for a particular purpose. We're here to share our experience of the risen and ascended Lord. We're here in the power of the Holy Spirit to witness for Christ through words and through deeds. And the world needs Jesus Christ more than ever. People need his comfort, his healing, his companionship, his friendship, and his salvation. My hope and prayer as we return to church is that we will be all of that for Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn, hymn 529, Thy Hand, O God, Has Guided, 529.
stand, please stand with me, and we'll join together and say the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Sunday after Ascension Day. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time who is alive and reigns with us and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the second collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect for grace. O Lord our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, we give thanks that your Son was raised from the humiliation of the cross to the glory of heaven. We offer our prayers through him who, as our great High Priest, ever intercedes for us. We pray for all who serve his Church today, for Bishop Ferron and for all the diocesan clergy and readers, for our organists, church wardens and vestries, 
that our churches may open in safety. We remember the Reverend Mark Smith as he begins his ministry in the Kildrum Fratton group of parishes. May your people be nourished through spiritual worship, sound teaching and pastoral care. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in other places and of other traditions, and especially all who are facing discrimination or persecution because of their faith. Sustain their belief and strengthen our fellowship through prayer and practical support. Jesus, our High Priest, Hear our prayer. We pray for each other as we seek to be witnesses of Christ in our daily lives and work. We remember members of the Garda Shirkana and all the emergency services, doctors, nurses, carers and home helps. Lead us by your Holy Spirit in the way of Christ that we may learn to speak and act as he would. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. We pray for our President and Government and all the leaders of nations as they try to resolve the difficult issues confronting them. We remember the civil wars in Syria and Yemen Myanmar and Ethiopia. We pray for the people of India being ravaged by COVID. May those in authority know that they are accountable to God and guide them into policies that promote justice, reconciliation and opportunity for all. Jesus, our High Priest, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering in any way at this time. For those who are facing illness, increasing frailty or painful treatment. For all who have to bear disabilities of any kind. For the anxious, lonely and depressed. For people struggling with addictions and for the bereaved. Jesus, our High Priest, hear our prayer. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We'll now sing hymn number 334. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart.
Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you his abundant gifts that you may be raised with him in glory. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each one of us this day and always. Amen.